I'm an anti-feminist because I think it's oppressive, I think it's anti-male, I think it's anti-femininity. Now, it may be a very weak Brexit, but I'll tell you what, Brexit of any kind and leaving those treaties as well. That's the best yeah. ever interview. Yeah. The Michael Parkinson. You got nothing on this book. <laughs> G'day and welcome to Pello Talk. I'm Dave Pello. Now, one of the big issues in our society right at the moment is the issue of parental authority. Exactly when does your child become the property of the government, if at all? And where do the parents' rights stop in deciding what uh, the child's childhood will be like? What kind of ideology, values, um, health decisions will be made by the parents? And, and where do their rights stop? There's a great article in The Australian recently um, by Bernard Lane. It's titled, Adults Fail by Giving In to Trans Teenagers. And in this, he's uh, commenting, or, or rather he's um, writing about Mr. Stevenson, who is a clinical psychologist involved in helping the uh, trauma victims from the Bali bombing. And he was commenting, this psychologist, on a submission by the Australian Psychological Society that doctors should be able to go ahead with under 16 trans surgery, uh, for the record, that is mutilating a child by chopping off their breasts or genitals. Uh, with both parents opposed, the Australian Psychological Society is saying doctors should be able to surgically mutilate children with both parents opposed and no mandatory counselling for the adolescent as long as the clinicians were competent in assessing the teen's capacity to make the decision. For the record, I should probably note that the Australian Psychological Society doesn't use the word mutilation. Um, they use nice uh, euphemisms um, for that, such as surgery, um, trans, etc. So the APS, the Australian Psychological Society, claims 24,000 members, but uh, Mr. Stevenson is part of a breakaway body, the Australian Association of Psychologists Incorporated, and they have now got about 8,000 members, people who are leaving the APA because they don't like the way they are being misrepresented by them. So I've actually been asked a question and I uh, want to address that in this video today. Uh, a viewer has written in and said, a few months ago, I started getting the feeling that little Jimmy was questioning if he was a girl. And so I asked him directly and he responded with yes. And it was because he plays with girls at school rather than boys. I explained to him the concept of a tomboy and explained that that can be like that for boys too. But that didn't mean he was a girl. But things have kept coming up and he started expressing the desire for long hair and skirts and was just questioning his gender constantly. And this concerned me because I didn't know what had brought this on. I also started noticing, noticing sexual behaviours at home and often retreating to his bedroom for a few minutes before coming back. Now, I've actually had a, a bit of contact with this person asking the question, and uh, she doesn't say in this, in this email, but little Jimmy, obviously not his real name, is only seven years old. She continues, at this point, I was pretty sure safe schools was being taught. And I questioned him on what was being taught at school, and his words in a matter of fact tone were, there are two ways to make other people feel nice. One is to be kind to them, and the other is with your penis. I was shocked and angry, and the only place it could have come from was school. But also it was the way he said it, like he was rehearsing something he had been told. I asked him where he learned that, and he said he learns it in health. He has also started saying things like, Mum, what if you got married to a girl? And what would happen if I married a dad? He sees all men as dads. He also came home last week and said his teacher told them that basically some people do like their own gender and we need to accept them even if we don't feel that way. We had an open classroom afternoon yesterday afternoon where little Jimmy showed us his health book and his teacher prompted him to show me the safe feelings worksheet he did that day in health, which was all about how to know if we are feeling safe, etc. And she asked if I could pass along uh, Mareka Rancy's details, political posting mama. And uh, better than that, I've got Mareka Rancy on the video right now. 
Mareka, thank you so much for joining Pillow Talk. What do you think about this mum's question? Uh, well, it's not, unfortunately, it's not an uncommon question. I've also received um, many times um, parents in the, with these similar concerns and um, they reach out to me as well with um, concern about what's going on. Um, obviously, very distressing for this mum. Um, and yeah. unfortunately not new. We're in unprecedented times in our country. Um, I obviously, along with many others, have tried to blow the whistle on what's going on mm -hmm. um, with very sexualised programs and obviously the, um, the transgender activism um, with this infiltration of gender theory that's being pushed onto kids. So I'm sure this mother's incredibly distressed, yeah. um, as, as many mothers are, and uh, personally... I know of three cases now where um, the families have actually left the country because of wow. concerns. Yeah. So um, in, in one particular, actually two particular cases, um, the children had um, diagnosed gender dysphoria. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in the cases of these families, they um, much preferred the, the sit and wait approach um, to not obviously get in, into any um, gender reassignment or hormone treatment. Yep. Um, but both families were terrified that if they expressed their concerns that this agenda would be pushed and that would be the only option they'd be given um, with their rights removed. And so both families um, fortunately had psychologists who were supportive of um, their situation. Um, just encourage their children to, to be who they are, they are, but to not obviously go that medicalised route. But they both decided, um, and there's another family as well, mm -hmm. um, yeah, to leave the country. Two of them have gone to Poland, two of these families. So, so here's the thing um, that I've been asked, and um, as I'm trying to answer this question helpfully, I'm coming to realise it's a really hard question to answer, and that is, where can parents find a psychologist or a counsellor who will sincerely and authentically and with evidence-based therapies um, help their child through uh, gender dysphoria without pushing them down um, this transition road? Mm. Look, I obviously will state, and I've stated all along, I'm certainly not an expert. Um, I've just been sure. thrust into this world. So... Um, I've had to obviously um, go searching myself on behalf of some of these very concerned families mm. just to try and find them some support. Um, interesting that article that you mentioned because there is a body of psychologists who are rejecting this agenda um, yep. with, um, I think, as you mentioned, so that's the Australian Association of um, Psychologists, Psychologists Incorporated. Yep. Um, and the head of that is Paul um, Stevenson. There seems to be a number of... Um, medical professionals um, of late who have become increasingly alarmed and concerned by, by this agenda. And it's this, kind of a um, rhetorical question that I'm asking because mm. my research has found it, it's actually really hard. And yes. the more people I talk to, it appears yeah. there is a deep-seated fear uh, amongst um, mental health professionals that if they take a evidence-based position that doesn't conform to the status quo ideological position, then they're actually going to be professionally punished by some of these um, peak bodies and professional associations um, for having a, a position that uh, is sceptical about the current narrative um, around safe schools and gender transitioning and the 72,397 genders um, that are currently mm -hmm. um, listed and, you know, change with the moon or your feelings or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, when they want a science-based position, so they're actually afraid to advertise. Oh, yeah. They're actually afraid to come out uh, because lawfare and professional associations have been weaponized to conform science to a narrative rather than the other way around. So this in itself You're seems to be a, a really, uh, how mm. do you know if that um, association is having any success, um, I guess by strength of numbers um, in, in being able to offer more services and reach more people? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I was alerted to it um, through the article myself in the Australian right. um, and it's, it's a, um, fantastic turn of events i think and it's, it's taken a little while because 
these parents are desperate. They're desperate for help. Um, yeah. And and you're right, there isn't anywhere for them to go. And and the psychologists that don't agree with this, um, the doctors, the many, many medical professionals um, have this um a political agenda that um, makes them makes them very fearful to speak right. out and and so um people do need to be cautious i mean as i mentioned that we're in unprecedented times in this country and unfortunately mm. things will be weaponized as soon as parents um uh kind of react in, in the way that's um deemed not appropriate for this ideology if they, they show any um concern the, the laws will be weaponised against them. And here yeah. in Victoria, we have the mature minor law. So from the age of 12, um, parental rights are removed. Um, if, if the uh, child is deemed at the age of 12 a mature minor um, mm -hmm. by a teacher or a medical professional, then all parental rights um, can be removed. And oh, so... Brilliant. So Victoria now has 12-year-olds voting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and, I guess that's the next And push. getting yeah. tattoos... Mm, absolutely and, I mean, and prostituting themselves mm, interesting isn't it when the brain's not even developed yeah. um you know into the early 20s that um yeah these they, yeah handed over to the state and of this course is a big battle that we're in ridiculous no, no. ridiculous um and so that's the fear because you know with the, with the families that i mentioned their concern was if they showed any um alarm as to what was going on or they alerted anybody to their concerns that they wouldn't actually be provided with um, the the proper care that that they were wanting for their family. It does so, seem in this environment like if you resist a child's, you, you know, um, suggestions that they might be transgender, and and try and treat them at as any other pathological confusion, then you're inviting the government to get really involved in a very unwelcome and hostile way in your parenting mm. and and your family. What's your advice? for the generic situation where somebody discovers a, a parent um, discovers that their children are getting polluted with with this ideology and, and worse maybe even um, maybe even uh, succumbing to some of, of the these suggestions mm. um, well look unfortunately we're in a time where you have to work with the system not against the system um, that's my feeling. So um, stay calm and um, seek professional help outside. I mean, I think the, the language needs to be around the well-being, the long-term well-being of the child, your concern, your care. Um, but uh, I'd certainly be um, very strategic about how this was handled. I mean, it's interesting. Uh, direct everyone to have a look. I've posted on my page just today, Lyle Shelton's latest blog. Mm -hmm. um, where some screenshots have been um, presented by another mother um, from the Safe Schools program, now deleted or hidden, but it actually, I'm going to actually read it out. It says, yeah. um, in, in the curriculum, it says, this is my life, this is something I have to do. So this is if a, a child um, thinks they're going to receive resistance to um, uh, surgery, I guess, surgical intervention or hormone intervention for transitioning. Mm -hmm says, and if I had any other sort of medical condition, people wouldn't say, wait to get treatment. And then it goes on to say, let's rush you to hospital and let's quickly get you the surgeries you need. Um, so this is part of the, the safe schools indoctrination. Um, that, That's that, shocking. That people, you know, children are potentially being taught in schools. Um, so I, I would suggest staying really calm. I would, um, you know, you don't want to that cause That would be counterintuitive for me. Anybody. Very much so. I mean, mm. I mean, your, your instinct would be to to get them out of there and, and go. But you know, unless you can get them into a um, a safer environment, like a, a private school, if that's that that's not conforming to this, which is very very hard, especially in Victoria. But wow. there are some safe havens. Um, are Christian schools conforming to this curriculum in Victoria? Some are. Yes. Yes. You're joking. Yeah. No. No. Goodness so, me. Yeah. Um, so that's where you have to be very careful. I mean, that was a situation with one of the families. They were a Christian family and they were concerned that um, even going to another Christian school, you alert the wrong kind of person. Um, you know, it just takes one zealot in the school um, wow. and the laws are already in place. So um, you can, you know, you lose that, the, 
the right to um, their medical information. I mean, in, uh, in Victoria, we've had um, our ch my children uh, have been removed. I think this is actually it'll be federal law. <laughs> um, um, at the age of fourteen, they're taken off your Medicare card, and you are potentially denied any medical access to your children from fourteen. So, how ridiculous! Um, yeah, the and government's 100, literally 100, stealing children. There is. There's a hundred doctors' clinics in um, operating in Victorian schools, unbeknownst mm. to the the population, um, who seem seemingly are unaware that this is happening. Um, uh, funded by the Daniel Andrews government, but basically a hundred doctors' clinics operating um, where your child can have their own um, medical appointments, and you'd you'd be none the wiser. Um, and also, we've got the implementation of the lawyers and schools program. So yep. all of this is is you know, there's nothing alarmist about um, what we're saying. This is actually happening. All the yep. information can be found. The program has come from UNESCO. So it's, it, this is a worldwide problem um, where they're, they're pushing this agenda. But yep. yeah, I, I mean, it is counterintuitive, but you really need to be um, stay calm and, and seek professional help that is um, not the mainstream, those brave voices that are speaking up that share your... Yeah your views and values so um there's it's, you know the australian christian lobby the australian family association great um they're always great great places to direct, to direct people to if somebody wants to contact you directly Mareka, and, and just have a, a quiet chat with you um how can they reach you uh yeah look um obviously i mean everything i do is is in a volunteer capacity as a mum of four um, I do have an inbox through Political Posting Mama that people um, often your Facebook message, page? message me my, through my Facebook page. Um, and then, you know, uh, obviously um, I do need to screen certain certain individuals, but um, all yep. going well, I'm happy to, to take the conversation further for yep. people that have these concerns. Brilliant. Um, so, and help where I can. I mean, I, you know, I'm navigating it all myself, but obviously. Um, and so most of the time you'll probably just re refer people to um, professional yeah. associations like the Australian Family Association, the Australian Christian Absolutely. Lobby, and, yeah. and somebody that's closer and, to them. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, the Australian Association of Psychologists that have just come out with um, the director, Paul Stevenson, this is, this right. is new and this is fantastic. Um, but there is, there is a, an organisation that's trying behind the scenes, they're not out yet, but to try and gather um, those people together so that there is somewhere. We, we have to fight to back. Go. We have to push back because um, yeah. more socialist governments such as in Victoria and, and uh, the the trend in that direction across Australia have a clear agenda to undermine, dilute, and even remove parental authority over mm. how our children are raised and the healthcare decisions we make for them, as well as the philosophical decisions we make for them. Yeah. The government indoctrinating your children is a terrible, terrible idea. It's exactly what the socialist and fascist regimes of, of Stalin and Hitler and other people do is, is divide families and turn children against their parents and, and convince mm. kids that what a wonderful way to entrench permanent power for a government and, and for an agenda. Um, and the, the best way to keep them honest is to let parents raise their children and uh, teach them how to think independently for themselves and, and not just swallow whatever the government spoon feeds them. Look, I'm going to put the links to some of uh, these associations beneath this video so that we can not bombard uh, political posting mama Facebook page um, because it might take a long time to answer them all back. But uh, if you want to, there's uh, plenty of information that's available on that Facebook page, uh, political posting mama. And that's spelt the Australian way uh, with a U, not an O. And, uh, and then have a look beneath this video as well. The Australian Christian Lobby, the Australian Family Association. And uh, this article that I had a look at, um, we'll try and find that Clinical Psychologist Association. Put that, that link in there. Uh, but please, don't do this alone and don't panic. Um, but also, don't be lethargic or apathetic mm. about mm. what your children are being taught. Uh, make sure you know, make sure you have conversations with them because there are malicious, evil agendas that are trying to steal your child's innocence and uh, perverted agendas uh, are trying to get into their mind and uh, destroy your family. And there's no word, no uh, 
sense, mincing words about that. That's exactly what's happening. And um, if you love your kids, uh, it pays to just be aware what they're being taught. And maybe it's worthwhile homeschooling them or finding a school that actually uh, supports uh, your values. Any final words, Marika? Uh, I just, I just, it's my prayer and my hope that Australian parents will wake up. I mean, some are awake to what's going on, but mm -hmm. uh, it is such a nasty agenda that I just, uh, I just hope that people start to realise that, you know, I've certainly been vindicated in, in the whistleblowing that, you know, my children helped with and that, that we did early on, but, mm. um, and, and they're definitely pushing this agenda, but we, we just need to wake up. It's like the frog in boiling water yep. and we're, we're getting to boiling point. Um, and uh, I have become a, the, the kind of conduit for these parents who, you know, mm. some of these have actually been through the surgical route against their family wishes. And you've got yep. girls with ha their breasts being removed, healthy breasts being removed and, yep. um, and ending up regretting it in, in a of number course. of situations a few years later. Um, but it, mm. it's done, you know, hormone replacement therapy, which sterilizes them. And, uh, and yep. they certainly are removing parental rights. We, we can't think that this can't happen in our country just because we've always enjoyed these freedoms. So please, yeah. I just yeah. want to plead with the public to not be complacent and to, to really not, not always trust those that maybe in the past you have trusted before. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's a shame. Yes. Um, but let's, let's just think of it more positively as a partnership with teachers. You want to know what they're teaching at school. Um, and this is probably the way to have the conversation with the teachers. Mm. I want to know what you're teaching at school so I can back you up and support you and cooperate with you at home. Um, Absolutely. The majority with, of teachers are still doing right. a great job. And the majority and of teachers, that's going to be a really, are. really positive um, choice yeah. and they good for your kids. kids. Good for yep. your kids. Um, thank that's you very right. much for uh, joining me again, Mareka. And, and look, thank you again for all the uh, cost you and your family have personally counted to fight for um, the rest of Australian families. Thanks, Dave. Great to be with you. Keep up the fight too. Yeah. Well, that's it for this episode of Pello Talk. But good news, the tickets for the next Church and State Summit are now on sale. And it would be a big favour if you could buy yours now instead of two days before the summit. There's a lot of costs I've got to start investing in uh, right now. And um, it would be really, really helpful if, if you know you're coming um, to a high degree of certainty, grab a ticket. Uh, you don't want to miss it. Um, the crowd's getting bigger, 50% each year. And uh, Political Posting Mama was actually one of our guest speakers this year. We always have the nation's highest calibre speakers come and share information that will enlighten us about the important public issues and encourage us that we actually can be effective in influencing the culture uh, as we should in this nation. After all, we're citizens and it's fully legal. There's an invitation from the government to get involved in deciding what public policy will be, what the government will look like and what kind of justice and peace our neighbours will or will, will enjoy or will be denied. And uh, that's why it's really important that we be informed. So the dates for that are the 28th and 29th of February in Brisbane. And we're also going to be in Auckland, Melbourne and Sydney in the days immediately before that. So check out churchandstate.com.au and uh, grab your tickets today. Make sure you tell a friend. And uh, if you haven't been to my website, head to davepello.com. And uh, there's a whole lot of uh, back information there, articles and episodes that you can watch. And um, thanks a lot for watching. And we will see you in the comment section.